This video will show how to set up and use subsites within your RockWorks project area to better interpret and display your data. For many real-world applications, the data density over an area is not uniform. Large projects commonly consist of numerous smaller subsites. For example, a mining district may contain several individual mines and prospects or a hazardous waste site may contain a waste lagoon, several leaking underground storage tanks, leaking sewer lines and waste piles. Data for each subsite can be abundant and closely spaced, whereas data between subsites is sparse or absent. We will assume that you have a large project and would like to set up subsites within your project. Let's start by adding a site field to the location table in the main borehole manager window. Right click on the gray area in the middle of the screen and select choose optional fields. A dialog box titled optional fields for location will now be displayed. Click on the add a new field icon and type in site under the field name entry box. Now click OK and a new field called site will be displayed at the bottom of the gray area within the location table. For this example, we have three subsites in our project area named A, B, and C. For each borehole located in Site A, type an A into the new site field that you just created within the location table. Do the same for Sites B and C. Now RockWorks has the information it needs to work with these subsites independently or combined with each other and or the regional exploration data located outside of the subsites. Now we will want to define and save the dimensions for each subsite. At the top of the borehole manager page, select Edit and then Enable All Boreholes. This will turn on all boreholes in your project area. Now, we will concentrate on only boreholes located in Site A by selecting View and then Filter Boreholes. The Filter Boreholes screen will now open. Uncheck the Surface Region box and select the Optional Fields box. In the upper portion of the Filter Boreholes screen, under Optional Fields, select Sites from the pull-down menu and type in A into the value field. Then click on Add. Site is equal to A will appear in the underlying text box. Click OK. You will now see that only boreholes located within Site A are now checked in the main borehole manager screen. We will now save the Site A project dimensions for later use. Click on the Scan Enabled Boreholes button and the program will establish new minimum and maximum coordinates for Site A. Then we will check on the Save Dimensions to File button and save these coordinates in a text file named SiteA.txt. We can follow the same procedure for Sites B and C and save the subsite project dimensions for these areas as well. Now, let's suppose that we would like to make a borehole map of just the Site A boreholes. First, we go to the Select Boreholes under the View menu and choose Sites in the Field pull-down menu and type in A in the Value field. Click on the Add and OK buttons and all boreholes within Site A will be enabled within the Borehole Data Manager. 
We will now establish the dimensions for Site A by selecting the Load Dimensions from File button and opening the Site A text file. This will load the dimensions for Site A under the Project Dimensions area of the Borehole Manager. From here, we can easily generate a map of the boreholes in Site A by selecting Map Borehole Locations and the Process button at the bottom of the two-dimensional Borehole Location Map window. As you can hopefully see by now, there's no limit to the number of subsites and subsite combinations that you can manage within a single RockWorks database. Thanks for watching.